about this tractor. If you take a look at this thing, most people believe that it's a Ford N, like an 8N, 9N, 2N, whatever. But no, this is a Ferguson. A little bit of history. Ferguson, Harry Ferguson approached Henry Ford with an idea for a hitch. And Ford was making the Fordson at the time, which was a big, lunky tractor. And uh, Harry Ferguson, I believe he invented the three-point hitch completely, he, or either that or he made it into what it is. But that is the, the Ferguson three-point system, I believe is what he called it. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but we got 35 to 45 mile an hour winds today. Let's see if I can show that. Relatively common around here, but what's not so common is that it's coming out of the east. It usually comes out of that direction there. It's coming the other direction, so it's blowing blowing sleet underneath the door, which I have open a little bit because I, I have an extension cord running underneath it, which is leading to a little bit of water on the floor. But I have a drain for that. Back to the tractor. So, Harry Ferguson and Henry Ford had a handshake agreement that Ford would produce tractors that used uh, Harry's hitch system, and they were called the Ford Ferguson. That was what they were supposed to be called, and it, it actually had it on the tractor, I, think, I believe, for the first year, which is, that would be the Ford 9N which means it was made in 1949. Uh, 19, or no, 39, 1939. In 42, the 2N came out, and in 48, the 8N came out. I think it was 53 that the Jubilee came out. But 48 is when Harry Ferguson and Henry Ford finally split ways and Ferguson sued Ford for stealing his hitch system. I guess Ford quit making payments to him and just outright stole his, his hitch design, the three-point hitch. And Ferguson won nine and a quarter million dollars back in 1948, which is like three zillion right now. So a little bit of history. These were only made. This is a Ferguson, not a Massey Ferguson. The Fergusons in America were only made from 1948 to 1951, uh, or at least the TO-20 was. There, then there's the TO-30 and I believe the TO-40. Uh, these are 28 horsepower. And a little bit more about the Ferguson system. The way this is designed, when the plow is attached, it was designed for plowing. When the plow is attached, a moldboard plow, uh, it transfers a nice little light tractor like this could plow with a fairly heavy plow on it. They used a single and a double bottom because it transferred the weight through the three-point system to the rear tires. So the more, the more the plow dug in, the more traction it would uh, apply uh, to the tires. It was a wonderful system. It's, uh, before that, they, they pulled a, a wheel plow. A lot of the implements had, 
had a guy sitting on the back and you know this has a PTO and everything this is this is a 50 51 this is last year they made the TO 20 and what else that's it. oh and the English version I think they made the English version much longer the TE 20 which is the English version of this same tractor three of them went with uh, Sir Edmund Hillary to the South Pole. A bitchin' little tractor. So, there's, there's a lot more information on it online. I'll put a link in the, in the description on this. But my version, this one here, let me see if I can get the hood open for you with the one hand. All right. So this one right here, someone has put a deluxe seat on. Uh, you could buy these aftermarket back in the day. And I, I can't even drive this thing with that, that tiny little space between the wheel and the seat and the pedals and stuff. I just don't fit. I'm, I'm six foot four. So I'm going to be putting on the seat itself is, I believe, the, the stock seat. But it doesn't have the correct spring. That, I believe, is the correct spring with the wrong seat on it. So I'm going to take that spring. I'm probably, and I have another seat in here somewhere. I'll have to, oh, there it is, right here. This is an original seat as well. So one of the, one of the seats, but definitely that spring are going to go on this and that should take me far enough back where I can ride the thing and I'll put one of the seats on this uh, I call it the Hoyt Clagwell I'm going to put uh, this already has a spring like that so I'm going to put one of the one of the seats on this and the steering wheels kind of jacked up so I'm going to put a tractor uh, tractor steering wheel kind of like that on this I found one that's 13 inches the same as this so customize that but back to this I'm gonna convert this to 12 volts um, so it starts starts a lot easier uh, most of the old farmers the headlights were an option and most didn't get it and then later on they wanted it so they put on these uh, aftermarket headlights which are garbage the the original equipment headlights were the really nice teardrop headlights that's what I'm gonna put on and I'm gonna put on the the backlight which is for uh, removing your implements and stuff at the end of the day um, I can't remember if this has, usually they have a switch right on the top of the light. Oh yeah, that's right, he's got one on here. They have a switch right on the top of the light to turn it on and off. And it allows you to back into the barn if, you, if you're going to put your tractor away. It has a leaky oil cover on the bottom. And when you get this is the gasket for it. So I have, and you, you have to take that cover off. Let me see if I can see that. You gotta take this big, oops. You gotta take this big cover off to uh, change the oil filter. So I gotta take that cover off, replace that, uh, that gasket and replace the filter while I'm there. Change the fluids, or all of the fluids. 
go through the manual, find all the zerks, make sure they're still clean and accepting grease or replace them and grease all the grease points. The, the gas tank is beautiful on the inside, which that'll be hard to see, but no rust at all. Really nice. It might be a replacement, but either way, the gas tank is good. And it looks like there's a wall right here, so it must have a reserve tank up front. Which brings me to another thing. Um, when I first got this, uh, the sediment bowl was leaking when I turned it, so I'm going to have to check into that. Um, the tanks that have a reserve like that, uh, this petcock here, depending on the way you turn it, uh, a certain amount of turns will get you the main tank, and then a little more will get you to the reserve. It's, I guess it's supposed to let you know that it's time to get home before you run out in the field. So I'm going to replace most of the electronics, the distributor cap, plugs, plug wires, uh, throw alternator on there. Um, what else? I don't know if the, if the uh, oil gauge is working or not. And check into this air filter. See if that, you know, it's an oil bath filter, so that's a real grimy job. I drove it here uh, five miles. The battery died halfway, so I don't know if the generator is is going bad or if it's bad, but it doesn't matter. It's going to have, have an alternator soon. So I think that's about it. I really need to check the brakes as well. Um, when I apply the brakes, it appears to be applying to one side, either much more than the other or only to one side, and that's really dangerous. Get this thing uh, spinning around in circles and throw me off. No need for that. So I got a new 12 volt battery for it. Um, I might do a little bit of repair on on this battery uh, platform there. We'll see. I'm hoping to put a loader on this. And I found a place that sells them. They sell them brand new, but it's about three three thousand bucks plus shipping, and I believe it's on the East Coast. So I don't know if that's going to be in the budget this year or not. I'm kind of hoping to get like a '63, I guess, or a '640, a Ford, uh, possibly a diesel, something with a little bigger engine. A little bit over 50 horsepower for doing work around here but until then this is this is what's going to do the job so uh, stick around and I'll show you the process of converting this over and I'm also going to convert it to uh, electronic ignition I want something reliable I want it to just start when I want it to start and not have to mess around with that six volt slow start possible start stuff okay that's it for this uh, next time next video on this I will be converting to 12 volts and that that shouldn't be very long from now